Hey guys, we just shipped V2 of the list widget. I'm so excited to share this with you. This is as a result of months of planning, development, profiling, so that we ship a super stable release for this next gen of the list widget. All right, I know you want to see this, so I'm not going to stand in your way anymore. My name is Confident, and I'm a developer advocate at AppSmith. Let's take a look at what's new in the list widget V2. If you don't know how to use the list widget, you are watching the wrong video, but I'm going to be nice and just show you how it works anyway. So um, how to use the list widget in a few seconds is you go to the widget section, you grab a list widget, and what a list does is it replicates a pattern that you describe in the first card. You also have to give it some data, so let's actually do that. I'm going to use a real data source versus using the hard-coded data you see here. And uh, this data source can be from really any source, actually. It could be a REST API, a GraphQL API, all of the integrations you see right here, or a database. But let's go with a REST API. And I'm going to create a REST API to grab a bunch of users. So I'm going to call this users. And I'm going to use the mock API you see right here. So if we run this, we would have a bunch of users coming back, which looks nice, as you can see. We're going to take this data and link it up to the list widgets we have on the canvas. So let's delete all of this dummy data and binding data coming from the API. So this is going to be users.data.users. And as you can see, we have actual user information showing on the list widget. So don't forget the way the list widget works is that it replicates whatever is done on the first child to every other child in the list and you can bring in new widgets so for example i can delete the image widget right over there and bring in a new image widget so let's drop a brand new image widget all right and this is going to be used to display the user's avatar so i can configure this to display the user's avatar by typing in current item dot avatar and then we have user's avatar showing up user's name showing up and of course we have the user's id also displayed so that's how a list widget works in a nutshell now let's actually take a look at what's new with the list widget that's why you're here right so let's take a look at it So the first feature that's available on the list widget is server-side pagination. Just like the table widget, the list widget now supports server-side pagination and I probably would not be wrong if I say the list widget is starting to take or eat into the market share of the table widget. That's probably bad for the economy but let's take a look at how to set this up. So I have a list widget right now with a bunch of items and to set up server-side pagination for the list widget, all I have to do is enable it right here. Okay, that's not all, but one of the things I have to do is enable it right here. So I have that turned on, and then I can go configure server-side pagination to work for the list widget. Now, something you notice is that the moment we turned on server-side pagination for the list widget, uh, the pagination we had from the original list disappeared. That's because we don't know, or the list widget doesn't know how many items are going to be displayed in this list so that it's able to create a better page navigation. So what you can do to fix that is you can supply a total records count. This is not necessary, but it's just going to give your users a better experience when they go try to page through the list widget. So right now, I know that the amount of items coming from this API is a thousand users. That's the number of users on this API. But if it's um, coming from a database, you actually don't know the records or a database to which um, records are going to be written to and other records will be deleted. You actually might want to write a separate query to query the database to figure out how many records are going to be coming from the database, for example. So I'm going to just make this static right now, um, a thousand users, and you can see pagination has been automatically generated so that we can jump through the pages using the numbers uh, shown at the bottom. That's because um, given the total number of records we've just entered into the list widget, and the total number of items that are rendered in a single view, the list widget is able to figure out how many pages will be required to display a thousand records. And right now it's 250 pages. Uh, so 250 multiplied by four is a thousand. That's how the math is done. And we have a better page experience. Now, the next thing we want to do is tell it what 
query to run whenever the page changes so that it knows how to actually accomplish the server-side pagination. So when the page changes, we want to execute the user's query. And of course, we can head back to the user's query. I'm using the keyboard navigation over there. Uh, we can head back here and copy the information required to paginate this specific API. Uh, of course, if this is a database query, the configuration is going to be slightly different, but two things are going to be necessary. One is the page number and the page size. So I am going to um, grab the actual page number from the list widget. So this is going to be list one dot page number. All right. And we also want to grab the page size. So this is going to be list one dot page size. All right. That looks good. Since you're having an error right here, I don't know why this error is coming up. So what I'm going to do is do a quick reload and we'll be back. All right, same error is fixed. Of course, restarting always fixes all errors. So um, nice to see this here. All right, so we have pagination set up. Now you notice we have users one to four showing up. When we switch over to the next page, we're going to see users five to eight and it keeps going on and on and on. And of course, all of this data is fetched at the time we actually switch the page from the API we have configured. So that's how easy it is to set up server-side pagination using the list widget. And of course, you don't have to use the table widget anymore. Another new and cool feature of the list widget is the ability to use all widgets within the list widget. Previously, you could only use a handful of widgets within the list widget, for example, the image widget, the text widget, uh, a button widget, the input widget. But now we've opened the floor such that you can use all widgets, even widgets that were in the forbidden list, such as a list widget itself. You can use a list widget within a list widget, a container widget, a table widget. You actually have no limits anymore. So let me show you how that works. I am going to set up the first item, of course, uh, the first item is replicated throughout the list. So let's expand this and let's try to set up a complex list. So I am going to grab a container widget. So let's grab this, place it on the canvas. All right, so we have a container widget in the list. Then we're going to grab a table widget and place that inside of the container widget. All right, so now we're having a container and a table widget. Now let's grab a list widget and place that inside of the container widget just beside the table widget. And now we have a container, a list, and a table inside of a list. And you can keep going deep, right? Because we have a list widget here, you can actually bring in another list inside of the list widget. I, I really don't know why you would want to do that, but of course, no one is stopping you and you can build really complex um, interfaces using the list widget right now. That's the point of allowing you use all of the widgets available on AppSmith inside of the list. So this is nice to see. All right, so the last new feature I'm going to be showing you is the new available properties, um, meta properties that are available on the list widget or APIs available on the list widget. These are going to help you have a more accurate view on what is going on on the list widget so that you can build better experiences for your users. So let us take a look at how this works. I'm just going to delete the container we had over there. I'm going to move the list widget to the side. Okay, that didn't work. All right, so moving it to the side and let's grab a text widget to which will be used for debugging. All right, so we have a text widget. So the first property I'm going to be showing you is the current item view and you see what this does in a second. So let's do a list, list one dot current item view. And this shows you what is currently available or rendered on the list widget. So as you can see, we have two items on the list widget right now, right? We have uh, the first item, which has two text widgets and an image widget. Same also goes for the second item. You can see we have those two text widgets, the first for the name, the second for the ID, and then we have the image widget with the image URL. So you actually have this API that exposes exactly what your end user is seeing so that you can actually do interesting things with this data. And of course, if I switch to a different page, you can see that the data is updated to reflect the current visible widgets and their current states. So this is actually a very useful API. 
The next one I'm going to be showing you is the selected item view. So this is selected item view. And this is going to show you what item on the list is selected. Of course, with the widget structure and the data of that particular widget or the data props of the widget. So if I go select the first um, user here, you can see that user data has been selected. And of course, I can take this information to do something else within my application. If I select the second user, that data is updated. And of course, we have this information to build better experiences in our app. Last thing I'm going to show you here is the triggered item view. So this is triggered item view. And what this does is it exposes the item, the list item that is triggering an event. The event could be button click um, uh, and um, input events or whatever events are available on AppSmith, a blur, a focus, you name it. Um, so let's go try this out. I'm just going to grab a button and place it into the first item set I replicated across the list. And then when I go click on the button, you notice that the first item is receiving an event. So the triggered item view is actually showing us the data rep of the first item. Even though the second item is selected, but the item currently receiving events is the first item and you have a view for it using the triggered item view um, API. So we actually have a lot more APIs to play around with. Um, how I like discovering APIs like this is just taking a look at what we have in the evaluated value pane and figuring out which of these properties or APIs will be interesting enough to use inside of an application. So you actually have a lot more meta properties to choose from. All right, so that's it for today's video on what's new with the list widget. I hope you go build something new and exciting using the list widget. And of course, let me know in the comment section what um, cool thoughts or ideas you're having around with building using the new properties available on the list widget. If you'd love to learn more, we actually have more videos on the list widget. There's a video right here showing you how to actually use the list widget if you haven't used it before. And we also made a video here detailing how to set up um, server-side pagination on list widgets, both using APIs and databases and all that in between. Alright, that's all for today's video. I see you next time. Take care. Don't forget to get subscribed. Bye-bye.